Many of you sitting here know Faye Dottino and knew her husband, Nick. They lived in this community, were married for over 60 years. And I went to anoint him before he died. And then after he died, I went and met with Faye and her children to plan his funeral. And she said something in that conversation that I've never forgotten. She said, I miss him, but I am so happy. She said, because when he started getting sick about 10 years ago, my daily prayer was that God would allow me to live just one day longer than he did so that I could walk him home. I really wanted to be the one to walk him home. And God answered my prayer. And I thought, what love. Recently, there was another story that went viral about an 80-year-old husband in Canada whose wife was starting to lose her vision and lose her coordination. And she had always been one of those people who liked to be put together when she went out. You know how some people really care about that? They've got to always be put together. She was one of the people who wanted that, and so she would never go out without full makeup and having her hair done. But because of her vision and her coordination, she was starting to burn her scalp every time she tried to use a curling iron. And she couldn't put mascara on. She'd actually injured herself. And so her husband quietly enrolled himself in a local beauty school. And he learned, using mannequins, how to curl someone's hair with a curling iron and how to apply mascara. And the young cosmetologist who worked at the beauty school said every day he comes in here with another story about his wife. He brags about her all the time. My wife was a secretary for thus and such years, and she could type hundreds of words a minute. You should meet her. You would love her. And every time he leaves, the cosmetologists say they cry because he just is so filled with love. So Faye and this husband in Alberta are both fulfilling this commandment. This is what Jesus is talking about. Love one another. Find ways to really love one another. Don't just talk about love. Don't just use the word Really love one another. And Jesus says in the strongest terms he can, hear me when I say this is a command. I'm commanding you to love one another. We got to hear in that beautiful second reading a little more about what we started hearing about last week. Jesus says, I am a vine and you are the branches. And we hear today that First John says, God is love. The vine that we are on is the vine of love. It is, it is love that measures how connected we are to the vine. When Jesus says, I want you to bear fruit, the fruit he's talking about can be described very easily. Am I a loving person? Would my family describe me as a loving person? Would people who don't know me well, but just wait on me at the Silver Spoon or at the Dunkin' Donuts drive through would they think of me as a loving person? That's how we know if we're bearing fruit. That's the fruit. It's always love. How loving am I? So we have to start at the exact spot where Faye and where this husband in Canada did with our spouse and our children. We have to start there. So we can ask ourselves some very private questions that are just honest. Am I loving with my family? You know, for some of us, we can say, you know, I'm a loving person, but I have been using how busy I am at work as an excuse for being very irritable at home. Or I am a teenager who has treated my family really badly for the past little bit of time. And I really, I can do better than that. Or I'm a, I'm a dad that everybody jokingly refers to as Archie Bunker. 
And I laugh, but it's not a compliment. So are there ways that we could tighten up how we treat people in our homes? Is there a chance that we could focus a bit on that? Mother Teresa said that the turning point in her life came when she realized that God, every day, was writing a love letter to the world. That God was writing a love letter to the world and that God wanted her to be the pencil. Can you relate to that? God is trying to write a love letter to the world and needs you and me to be pencils so that it's a message that people can actually receive. I have been good friends for over 20 years with a sister of St. Francis, who I met up here, but actually is from South Carolina and is now ministering there, Sister Mary Francis. And she's a fascinating person. She's been a sister for 25 years, but she has children my age. She's in that unique group that we might call sister moms. She had a family and then later in life went on to join the Franciscan sisters. And she's just wonderful. On top of her ministry, which focuses mostly on children, she's got a great gift for that. She also has custody and is raising her 10-year-old grandson. So this is a pretty remarkable woman. And she is somebody who I think is so remarkable and so charming. If you heard her southern lilt, you would just love it. I, I decided that I would interview her for Profiles of Endurance, that podcast that we do with everyday people who are doing extraordinary things with their lives so we can learn from them. And she and I are close, so when she wasn't calling me back, I didn't know what to make of it. And when she did call me back, she was calling from the ICU. She had been rear-ended in a very serious accident. She had broken her back and her neck, and she was really in pain and in struggle. And obviously, I've been praying for her furiously and checking in on her a lot. One of the things that happened on the first or second day of her being in the ICU was one of her brothers came and brought her a big bag of chocolate and candy. And she kept that on her table. And as I would call her, I'd call her every couple of days to check in on her. So often in the middle of the call, a nurse would walk in the room and everything would stop. And all of a sudden I would hear her say, hi there, angel. How are you? Thank you for coming in. And the nurse would say, well, it's so nice to see you, ma'am. You, you seem to be feeling better. She goes, better when you walk in. She said, what kind of candy do you like? Do you like peppermint patties? Do you like butterscotch? Do you like, do you like hard candy? I've got it all. Put your hand in this bag. You deserve a break. And she would just light up the life of these nurses. She would just shower them with gratitude and praise. And in doing that, she was showing us the second level of this commandment. You start with your family, but then you have to move beyond that to really fulfill the commandment. It has to go out to the bystanders, those nurses that she never would have met unless this happened, the, the voice that you hear at the little drive through speaker at Dunkin' Donuts, the server at Red's restaurant, all of those people that we sometimes think of as extras in the movie that stars you and me. I'm the star of the movie and oh, that's an extra. But of course they're not, they're, they're God's children. And so how interesting for me to think it was unusual for Sister Mary Frances to talk to her nurse in such a loving way. But of course she's trying to fulfill that commandment. She's trying to be the pencil that God is using to write a love letter to that nurse. And she works at it and does it so beautifully. One day when I was talking to her after she had been transferred out of the ICU, I asked her a little more about the accident. And she told me that she was rear-ended by a truck and she was in one of those little nun cars. And that she was grateful that her grandson wasn't in the car. She said that the truck was going 50 miles an hour, which explains her injuries and that it was being driven by a man 
who she found out had a suspended license. I asked if she ever got to talk to him and she said no, but then she said this, but I hope I can. She said, because he is carrying a burden that I do not want him to carry. I forgive him. I forgive him. She said, and I know that God is doing something mighty in both of our lives with this. God is going to make good of this. I know it, and I want him to know it. She said, I don't know if I'll get the chance, but I really hope I get to tell him that. There's a whole nother level of this commandment. We start with our family. Then we move to the bystanders. And then we move to the people who've hurt us. We move to those people that don't deserve our love, but God is writing a love letter to those people. Now, and I don't know why someone with a suspended license was driving. Obviously, I don't have a a good first impression of that. But can you imagine how much that person needs a love letter from God? Can you imagine how life-changing that could be? And she wants to write it. And that is a level of following that commandment that all of us can really think about. Jesus says, I want you to make a decision to love better. Maybe it starts with our family. Maybe who you're thinking of right now is a family member. Or maybe it's a bystander in your life. You know, I think for any of us, and you hear this a lot, when we go up to the counter or to the drive through of whatever establishment we're going to, what is our first thing we say? Is it, yeah, can I get a, yeah, can I get a, it's not a beautiful way to talk, is it? I was at Ted's Fish Fry recently in Albany, and there was someone whose order had gotten mixed up, and he'd asked for chili sauce, but he got tartar sauce on it. You should have seen the scene. I've never seen such a victim in my life. And it was the lunch rush. It was such a busy day. It was not hard to understand how this little mix-up happened. And of course they wanted to make it right. But you should have seen him. He wasn't thinking about that command at that moment. How are we at thinking about that command when we need to remember it? Can we change our tone from, yeah, can I get a, is there a way that we can know that this person is not just an extra in my movie, but is someone that God loves and is writing a love letter to. If we're up for a real challenge, we could ask ourselves this very hard question. Who is it in my life that I love the least? It's a hard question. And it's not, I don't think, for public display. I think that's a very private question. But, But whoever it is, that's someone that we need to aim at. We might not be able to love them as Jesus would, at least right away. But we now know the direction we need to aim at. And I think it's all fair to say that if we don't try to build our muscles in loving people at Red's Restaurant and the Silver Spoon and Dunkin' Donuts, we're never going to be able to love our ex. We're never going to be able to love someone who rear-ended us. We're never going to be able to do that. We have to start with the homework that we're able to do. So the work that we have in front of us is very clear and it's very hard. Jesus says, this I command you, love one another. 